Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansour University. Our lecture today about forceps delivery. So what we want to discuss today, the definition, prerequisites, indication and the contraindications, classification of forceps delivery, composition of obstetric forceps, the component of forceps, action of obstetric forceps, preparation and the technique of application of forceps, and lastly, the complication of forceps delivery. Let us start our journey with the definition. Forceps delivery is a vaginal delivery by the aid of forceps instruments. Forceps is an instrument designed for applying traction on the fetal head. Okay? So, if I wanted to shorten the second stage, if there is maternal exhaustion, fetal distress, or delivery of after coming ahead of the breach, I may use forceps. But you should know that forceps delivery decreasing all over the world. In the previous decades, the obstetrician don't prefer using forceps. Okay? So, the use of forceps is decreasing all over the world and it is suggested that the the use of, of forceps about 1.1 percent of all vaginal deliveries okay what about the prerequisite of course i need the cervix to be fully dilated the baby presented by vertex the bladder is empty Membrane is ruptured, head engaged, consent from the patient, fetal position will known, the baby has an average weight, not macrosomic baby, maternal pelvis is adequate for vaginal delivery, anesthesia is ready, and I should have a backup plan. If this operative delivery failed, I, I wanna to do cesarean section for example, so there must be an operative theater ready for cesarean section at any time. Okay, what about the indication? Maternal distress or exclusion, fetal distress, prolonged second stage of labor and can be used for delivery of after coming ahead in case of breach presentation by using paper forceps. What is the contraindication for using forceps? If the cervix not fully dilated, membrane intact, the head not engaged, unknown fetal position, cephalopelvic disproportion, malpresentation, fetal bleeding disorder like hemophilia or thrombocytopenia, fetal bone demineralization like osteogenesis impotent. What is the classification of forceps delivery? We have outlet forceps, low forceps, mid forceps. In modern obstetrics, there is no high forceps. Remember that. It was in the past and it was carrying many complications. So we have only outlet forceps, low forceps, and the mid forceps. What is the difference? In outlet forceps, scalp at introitus without separating labia, skull at the pelvic floor, at the perineum, on the perineum, sagittal suture in anteroposterior diameter, right occipital anterior, left occipital anterior, fetal head on the perineum, rotation less than 45 degrees. What about low forceps? The leading point of the fetal skull at station plus two or more and the knot on the pelvic floor. So it doesn't reach the perineum yet. Rotation less than 45 degree. Left occipital anterior, right occipital anterior or left occipital posterior, right occipital posterior. Rotation greater than 45 degree okay so both rotations are present in low forceps 
less than 45 and more than 45. What about mid forceps? This tension is above plus two, but still the head is engaged. So in all types, the head is engaged, but in mid forceps, it is above plus two, not below plus two, okay? What is the composition? What is the composition of obstetric forceps? Okay. It is formed of handle, lock to the picture, please. Lock, shank, and the blades. Okay. And these blades has cephalic curve, this curve inside here to accommodate the head. And the pelvic curve, pelvic curve, this pelvic curve to accommodate the shape of the pelvis. So I have cephalic, bur, uh, cephalic curve and pelvic curve. Okay, okay. The shank, this part is one to two inches, according if we are using long forceps or short forceps. Of course, it will be shorter in, in short forceps. And what is the function of this shank? Is to allow handle to be outside the valve during application of forceps. Okay. These blades could be fenestrated like Samson and Elliot, or smooth like Tucker McLean. Okay, Tucker McLean. This is a smooth, non-fenestrated blades, but Samson and the Elliot, it is fenestrated, okay? As regards Samson forceps have parallel separated shanks. As you see here, parallel separated shanks. This is the shank, parallel and separated and are used with long molded head. On the other hand, the Elliot shank, there is overlapping in the shanks, as you see, there is overlapping in the shanks. So in Simpson, they are parallel. Here in Elliot, it is overlapping shanks, okay? And are used with unmolded head used with unmolded head. Okay? Okay. What about the lock? Lock to this picture. This is different types of lock. This is the French lock, screw and the pivot. This is the English lock, double slot lock, which is the most common. Fix blades over the head. Okay? This is the German lock containing combination of both French and English lock. This is the sliding lock of killing the forceps. Designed for application on asynclitic head. And you should know that Samson, Elliot, and Maclean forceps all contain English lock. As you see here, all of them, Samson and Elliot and Maclean contain English lock, which doesn't allow for full rotation. On the other hand, killing the forceps, the lowest picture here, has a sliding lock. And the minimal pelvic curve, which allows this engagement and the full rotation. So, killing the forceps can be used for this engagement and the full rotation because it has sliding lock and it has a minimal pelvic curve okay let us go to the pepper forceps which is used for delivery of after coming ahead of the breach has a long curved shank as you see here it is long and the curved shank okay with a pelvic curve to help protect the head in flexed 
position. Okay. What about X extraction piece? Look to this picture, please. This is the X extraction piece fixed to the handle of this forceps. This is a detachable piece which is usually attached to the handle or the blade proper, but commonly to the handle, not commonly to the blade proper. You will see it commonly in with the handle. Okay. It has a perineal curve. And the consists of anteroposterior joints, side to side joint, and ball and the socket joint, as you see here. Okay. What is the action of obstetric forceps? Three main actions: traction, rotation, and the act as a lever. Traction is the main aim from forceps. Rotation allowed by the pole and socket joint in the axis transverse piece and also is the function of killing the forceps. Leave one plate can also be used to lever the head during caesarean section. You can use single plate to deliver the head in case of caesarean section, not for vaginal delivery. We are, we are talking about leave. What is the preparation? Of course, the bladder should be empty. Informed consent taken from, the, taken from the patient. And you should tell her the risks and the benefits of forceps delivery and the, any alternatives available like vacuum delivery and also to zero section if needed. The preferred forceps should be ready. Also, an instrument and the sutures for laceration of any rib of, of uh, laceration that may occur after forceps delivery, because commonly you, you may discover perineal laceration or vaginal laceration after forceps delivery. So you should be ready with an instrument, sutures, and the anesthesia for repairing of this laceration. Anesthesia and the pediatric pediatric team also should be available in the operative theater and the anesthesia include epidural, budendal block, local perineal, sense episiotomy, especially the mediolateral. We are going to do mediolateral because we are not using median episiotomy because it may extend to injure the anal sphincter. So with forces to delivery use the mediolateral episiotomy. which allowing more space and decreasing the occurrence of lacerations. Okay? So, anesthesia should be ready. Preparation for acid-based cooled blood sampling should be available because it should be ready in any complicated delivery. What about prophylactic antibiotics? There is controversy about the use of prophylactic antibiotics. But it was found that it doesn't significantly lower rate of maternal endometritis or maternal stay in a hospital. What is the technique of forceps delivery? The position of patient in lysotomy position, application of forceps. You should know that the sagittal suture should be equidistant between the branches, the blades. Okay? Posterior fontanelle one finger prints above the shanks tips of blades lie over cheeks frustrated blades admit one finger between the heel of plate and the head and the, you should be careful that no maternal tissue grasped by the forceps forceps applied from below the fetal head while sitting Traction force originate from which part? From the forearm, not from the chest. Okay? So the power, all the power coming from the forearm. The plane of traction is with the pelvic curve. Traction should be steady without rocking motion. This is very important. No rocking motion. 
traction is just steady. An early episiotomy, medilateral one, to avoid rectal injury. Yes, important because it allows for more space and to prevent many vaginal laceration. When the pipe parietal diameter pass the valve ring, remove the forceps in the reverse order. Most cases progress with first or second pull and the delivery occur usually with the third or fourth pull. What is the complication of forceps delivery? Maternal complication include complication of anesthesia, laceration, the perineum, vagina, lower uterine segment, or injury to the bladder also, or wound injuries, separation of the symphysis, dislocation of the sacroiliac joint, fracture of the coccyx, and also dislocation of the coccyx from the sacrum can happen, postpartum hemorrhage, whatever traumatic or atonic, uterine hemorrhage, anal sphincter injury because of perineal laceration or extension from zeotomy or especially if it was the midline so we advise mediolateral to avoid anal sphincter injury but it, sometimes perineal laceration may happen and injure the anal sphincter and anal canal the zycovaginal fistula and the stress incontinence long-term complication as for example pelvic organ prolapse with titric shock may occur and purple sepsis okay what is the fetal complication fetal asphyxia fracture of the scalp wounds intracranial hemorrhage from excessive compression of the head nerve lesions like facial nerve lesions with bell palsy and the brachial plexus injury cephal hematoma and the scalp laceration and contusion thank you i'm dr alamus professor of obstetrics and the gynecology faculty of medicine mansoura and